Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today's teaching is from one that I have heard and practiced many times and failed many times. The teaching name of it is Practical Choices. Practical Choices. But first of all, like I usually start, I start with quotes. I love quotes to keep us going. And on a daily basis, I look up quotes because other people have passed by what we're passing or what we're going through. One of them is, uh, is it one thing, excuse me, it says, it is one thing to believe in God and it is another to believe God. Uh -huh. So you take the choice, you either believe in God or you believe it is another to believe God. But his word says, what his promises are there for us in the word. So you have to have the word in you Amen. to know his promises, the gifts he has for you on a daily basis. We can hear it here and there in church, but you have to study for your own because the Lord talks to you on a daily basis. Yeah. And he wants to teach you through the word. That's the reason he left this manual, I call it, for you and me. The other quote is, God never said that the journey would be easy, That's right. but he did say that the arrival would be worthwhile. Oh, yes. And that's Max Lucado, author and writer. Another one says, God's work done is in God's way, will never lack, but God will supply all your needs. That's Hudson Taylor wrote then. Tony Evans wrote, God will meet you where you are in order to take you where you want, where he wants to take you. The other one says, let's God promises shine on your problems. That's Corey Ten Boom. If you never heard, uh, read, read her works or books, be sure and read them. They're awesome. Yes, they are. A Christian life is not a constant high. I have my moments. I have to get to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, oh God, forgive me or help me. This is Billy Graham. God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Amen. Okay, practical choices. How important are your choices in your daily life? How important, have you ever stopped to think how important your choices are? Yeah. As we study and go through it, we make 3,500 or thousands of choices every single day. <coughs> some right, some wrong. To convenience us or to convenience what is good for us. Mm -hmm. The ability to choose is our one of our human possessions. John Maxwell, the author and evangelist said, every choice that you make makes your negative. Every choices that you make navigates your life and needs your awareness. I believe the Holy Spirit is there to guide us daily if we choose and when we want to ask him to participate in our daily life, why? Because we make mistakes every day. We make mistakes every single day. And if that's the way you like to live, fine. I choose not to live that way. That's right. Yeah. Choices impact our lives and the ones we love. Example. In a bucket of water, you throw a rock, and it's the ripple effect that it takes. All of us say, well, it's my life. I can do with it whatever I want. But no. no You're responsible for someone, especially God, our Heavenly Father that created you, the earth, yes. and you especially, yeah. to make decisions for your good. He gives us free will, so we have to decide. Yeah. Choices impact our lives and the ones we love. The ripple effect, a rock you throw in a bucket of water, it's the ripple effect that it takes. It hurts so many people, the ones that love you, and even the ones that don't love you. Mm. Because it affects people that say, why did this person do that choice when she was raised in a different atmosphere and a different plan? But we do. Our thoughts determine our moods. Mm. Our moods determine our choices. The Word of God tells us in Deuteronomy 30, we don't have to go there because it's a long one, but be sure and study Deuteronomy. Yeah. It'll shock you the way it does me. Every once in a while I go back there yeah. to learn the curses and the blessings that God oh, had for his children. Our thoughts determine our moods and our moods determine our choices. Example, when you get up in the morning, you're so happy God created you, you're alive and well. Then you walk to the post office in a small town and 
The first person you see when you're in a high, like the song said, you're high in the mountain, and she said, oh, you don't look so good today, you're too fat or no, nope. negative. <laughs> then your mood changes, your mood changes. By the time you get further into the post office, you meet another old lady and I say, well, good morning, have a good day. What's so good about it? Because your mood changes. Your mood oh, changes. Yes. But you have to determine if the choices you make on a daily basis. Amen. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, says Deuteronomy 30, 19, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. This is what the word says. And if you don't know it, you can either take it or leave it. It's up to you. That's your choice. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, may live. You choose. I choose. The God-given ability to choose is one of the most important qualities we as human beings possess. Our choices may carry power, therefore, they receive attention and demand awareness. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware of your choices. Choices. Our ability to choose is the most important ability we possess. Choices define our identity. Mm -hmm. Who we are and whose we belong to. Choices today determine tomorrow's consequences. You've heard that. Choices and consequences. Uh It's your choosing. You know. This is where you can change it or change your choices Mm -hmm. or the way you live or your awareness that is on a daily basis. Choices define not only our today, Mm -hmm. but our legacy, our legacy. Your choices are your own and not ruled by God or Satan. We're very good about saying, oh, I guess God wanted me to do this. To sin, if you know the word, you know God does not want you to sin. But we always try to point, it's his fault. It's his fault. Like Adam and Eve, when they were created in Genesis, you'll find it where it says that our Heavenly Father, God, gave them rules and regulations Mm -hmm. just not to eat of one tree. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? They were manipulated by the enemy. They went and ate. Disobedience. Disobedience. Here is where you're going to learn it. Right. Like you learn when you're in a job, you learn how to do that job. When you're uh-huh. raising children, you study what the world wants you to learn to raise your children the best way you can about God, about rules of life, respect. You see a lot of youth nowadays that they don't even know the word respect or the meaning of it. Uh-huh. And they don't care to learn it. But it's your responsibility as parents to teach them. Yes. So that further down the road, you won't have to deal with their choices and their consequences. Uh, and of course, they're gonna blame you, the parents. But no, you didn't teach them that. That's your responsibility. Ooh, Nowadays, the TV is your babysitter. Mm-hmm. Nobody takes time to teach their children or their grandchildren about right and wrong, about the Lord, about choices and consequences, about what their responsibility the is children. as parents. But it is, and we're gonna have to be judged for that too. Yes. Choices define our legacy, I said for our todays and for our legacy. Your choices are your own, not ruled by God or Satan. In Deuteronomy 30, 15, it says, God said, look at what I've done for you today. I've placed in front of you life, good, death, and evil. He said, I place in front of you life, good, death, or evil. You choose. Your choices carry power. They require attention and awareness. Believe in yourself that you make choices. Trust your spirit, man, inside, which is yeah. your spirit, like we send the Holy Spirit. And don't let, and don't lie to yourself. Sometimes we lie to yourself. Well, I think this is what God would want me to do. Don't lie to yourself. You know yourself better than anybody else. <laughs> and if you don't find out through the word who you are in Christ, Amen. who you are in Christ, Always remember the Ten Commandments, which is in Exodus 20, and the Lord's Prayer, which is in Matthew 6. Give yourself regular checkups. Uh Regular, evaluate your life. If your life is not producing good life and good, your behavior needs to be dealt with. It needs to be changed. Bad behavior gives bad reports. Same behavior, same reports. Mm. Better behavior, better results. Mm-hmm. Behavior can be changed. It's up to you. That's right. 
and I wrote this down for my own benefit. He says, life is mm -hmm. to have life and sustain life. Mm -hmm. Life is to be quickened. And all of this information comes out of Deuteronomy. You would take the time to read. And if you don't like to read, there's video CDs and everything, so there's no excuse. <laughs> because your word says, my people will perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge of what? Of going to the beer joints or having a good time? <laughs> knowledge of the word of God. <laughs> the word of God. It says, life is to be revised from sickness and discouragement. Mm -hmm. That's what life does when you go by the word and make good choices for yourself and stand on the promises that the Lord has for each one of you. Health, prosperity, vitality is life as well. Good is pleasant and beautiful, delightful, joyful, happy, excellence and fruitful, kind, corrective, <coughs> righteousness, moral goodness mm -hmm. as appeals to moral evil. Okay, here comes death and nobody likes to read the negative. We just like to read the positive but if we don't know the good and the bad, the right and the good, the promises of the Lord, what the enemy can do to steal, kill, and destroy, then we don't learn anything. So you have to have balance. You have to have balance in your lives, in your everyday lives, the good and the bad, the evil. You choose. That's where the choices come in. Mm -hmm. Death is something unnatural that God doesn't want to happen to each one of us. That is something death is. But results from sin choices, sickness, pestilence, destruction. That's one of the things that death causes when we're disobedient, like Eve, when we choose to do what we want to do because it's our life and I'm going to do whatever I think I want to do because that's what I want to live and that's what I want to do. If the only one that hurts is me, that's not true. So don't lie to yourself. Evil is bad, wicked, injuries, unpleasant, unethical, on immoral, mm. of inferior qualities, inability to come up to good standards. Mm. The opposite of good, negative towards oh, God. Boy. Choosing life seems obvious, right? Mm. Yet so often we don't choose good things to do for ourselves. We don't choose good choices for us because every day you're tested by the enemy. What are you going to do? What yeah. test are you gonna pass? Are you gonna pass it or are you just gonna feel like, no, nah, not today. The consequences, don't fool yourself. The consequences, do not fool yourself. Amen. God created us and gave us own free will, our own free will to choose. He didn't even shove Jesus down our throat. That's right. If we choose to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we can. If we don't, you know, heaven or hell. Your choice, you're doing it. That's how much he loves us. When we become Christians, we believe our lives are like autopilot and God takes care of everything he gave us. No, no. Choices. Determine the authority to execute that will. In Proverbs, it says in 3, 5, 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make you straight straight your path. Mm -hmm. Recognize the changes you need to do to get good results. Mm -hmm. Recognize, you have to check yourself on a daily basis and say, okay, okay I'm, what am I going to do today? Yes. What am I going to do to place that or so that I can have examples just when you start working real young, okay, you're gonna spend all your money because you deserve <laughs> a good time. So spend it all, don't save any. No, but when no. you get old like me, you're no. gonna wish you had saved some yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He says, recognize the need that you change, the need to change your choices to have good results. Yes. This takes self-awareness and self-accountability. Yes. Matthew 7, 16, you will know them by their fruits. It says, what are your fruits and what is your life? Wow. You know everybody by their fruits. Yes, you can right. tell everybody, uh -huh. especially in the small town, you know everybody and you say, well, this one made it. I wonder why. Wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. The word, and because they heard the word yeah. and they choose to obey the uh -huh. commandments and receive the promises that God has because like me, I would like to have my cake and eat it too. So I'm gonna read all I know so that I can have it all. Yes. 
It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. That's right. If your fruits, he said, if you don't like it, if you don't like what your tree is producing, change it. Oh, yeah. You can right. change it. Yeah. When you choose godly, godly identity, you will make God choices. When you choose, let me start with all this. When we choose godly identity, yeah. we will make godly choices. Uh -huh. When we make godly choices, we build godly habits. Yeah. When we have godly habits, we get God's results. Yeah. When we choose God, we choose life. Amen. So you determine that every day, and nobody has to tell you. When we grow up and we start living, we learn life and death. So you choose what you're going to receive. In John 10, 10, it says that Jesus comes to give us life and give us abundant life. All of it. You're taking it too. John 1, 4 says that Jesus is there in life. He didn't say Jesus is there in death. No, he says in life. In life. What does the Bible say about wise decision? Oh. And we can go to James 1, 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. James 1 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, wisdom will helps you choose, help you make good decisions. You should ask God, who yeah. gives generously to all, yeah. not just to one or two, to all, who gives to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Uh -huh. When you ask, you have yeah. to ask. You have to ask. In the one I wrote down, it says, Any of you lacking in wisdom, let him go to God, who gives generously to all without reprocacy, and it will be given them. Amen. In Proverbs 15, 22. Proverbs 15, 22. It says, uh, plans fall for lack of counsel, that's wisdom and knowledge, but with many advisors they succeed. So it's good to ask for advice when you think you know it all. Uh, now, there's your pastors, there's good Christians, there's good people that can, are ready to teach you. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask and learn. When you think you know it all, pride comes in. And pride is one of the words that our Heavenly Father dislikes. Pride, orgullo, lack of it. Stay away from all of that. In Proverbs, in the one that I wrote that comes to me, it says, without counsel, plans fall or fail. Yeah. But with many advisors, they succeed. Yeah. Okay, those are choices that you make to ask for advice, to ask to succeed, yeah. to ask, maybe I'm going the wrong road. Should I ask for advice? No, this is what I'm gonna do. No, I know better. God knows my way. No, that's not it. First Thessalonians 5.17. The whole Bible is just an awesome thing that you can go on and on and every yeah. day you find something new. Yeah. You right. just have to make time the way you do time for TV yeah. or for other things that right. waste your time. Uh -huh. Some people live that way, but you have to choose to prioritize yeah. Jesus, the world, 
Jesus the world. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus the world. Yes. Okay, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, Rejoice always yes. in the good and the bad. Rejoice. Pray continually. Give yes. thanks in all circumstances. Yes. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yes. This, is, this is his will for you. Yes. 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 This is his will. Yes. But we're always not even wanting advice, especially from the word, because it uh -huh. keeps you where you're at. Uh -huh. It keeps you where you're going. And, it, and he knows the yesterday, the today, and tomorrow for you. So he's going to let you have it one way or another because he's not going to let you lose your soul your spirit your soul to the enemy right. but you have to do your part you have yeah. to do your part i'm just gonna read a few of the wise decisions that is in the word just to let you know that it's full of it and i didn't even have a chance to even write all of them probably in proverbs 3 5 6 proverbs 12 15 james 1 5 proverbs 1 5 philippians 4 5 proverbs there's nothing the word does not have for you to learn for today and for tomorrow yesterday is gone so don't live on yesterday don't live on the past the past you can't remedy That's right. but you can remedy today and tomorrow yeah. regarding if you like the way you live if the fruits are not showing in your life then you have to change that you're aware the only one can change it is you Amen. you can't let somebody else change it for you or depend on somebody else's decision that's why the lord gave you a mind a body and soul and spirit to go to the word and study and do for you and the word says that he's not going to he's not going to come back for us until everybody when the whole world has heard about salvation about repentance about the word he's going to give everybody a chance but you decide what you're going to do with your life. Okay, hindsight is 2020. If you know that, it always says, oh, if I knew yesterday what I know today. Mm -hmm. Excuses, excuses. I Googled the world's biggest mistakes, and the sad ones are like Hitler and the Jews, and I choose not even to to go there. The ones I like, because I like more nicer things, was the movie E.T. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, oh, Steven Spielberg asked Mars, the candy company, if they could use their M&Ms in the movie E.T. They declined. They said, no, no. Okay, they said, thank you. Then they went and talked to Hershey's mm -hmm. on the Reese's Kisses, if they could use the candies on the movie E.T. Hershey says, yes. In the first month, the sales went up 65%. Oh my gosh. I wonder what Mars is thinking after that. <laughs> I would, I'd stop and think, hey, I made a mistake here. Mm. Why didn't I do better? Mm. Choices. You choose, you choose every single day what your life is going to become. Amen. In 1962, executives in the Decca Records said, now, nah, guitars are a waste of time. No more. That's mm. past. That's the past. Here came a band to, to give them, show them their songs and interview for them. And they said, now, nah, guitars are out. Bye. EMI Records heard the same band, the band audition for them. And they, they produced eight songs from them. And that's the Beatles. Yeah. Oh my God. Choices and consequences. Yeah. Can't cry. The same goes for Grey and Anatomy. I forget the name. I didn't write it down. Grey Anatomy, the movie, the movie star that was first offered to come and play this series, he said, no, I've already got the money and that's not, I don't like the movie. But when it was produced, it's still going on in, in TV mm -hmm. and that man would have made over $350 million oh by now God. if he would have chosen to say, yes, I'll do the movie. Mm -hmm. So anytime you have especially hard choices to make, go to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never make right. you make a mistake. We make right. mistakes every yeah. day, but the Holy Spirit doesn't. That's the reason I like the song, Welcome Holy Spirit, because every single day we need the Holy Spirit. And that's what God left when he went back to heaven. Right. The Holy Spirit to be our comforter, yes. our provider, yes. our guidance, our director to direct our path. Yes. So you decide. You decide. Amen. This is one of my daily declarations. It says, I am loved, called, and chosen. Yes. 
I am rich in every way and generous in every occasion. I am anointed, appointed, equipped, and enabled by the power of God that works mightily within me. I live, breathe, and serve powerfully under the shelter of the high, most high God. Jesus loves each one of us people. Jesus loves us all. But we choose on a daily basis to love him a little bit and do what the world gives us because the world gives us a lot and the Lord gives us to enjoy. But we decide what kind of choices we want to enjoy or to produce on our daily lives. I'd like to go to Romans because that's what enable us to to do for the Lord when we know who we are in Christ. We need to know we need to know whose we are. We need to know yes you have earthly parents, yes you have friends, yes you have co-workers but you're an individual that was created individually by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and it's up to you. It's up to you. It'll be Romans 8, 37. Romans 8.37 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us, who? God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depths, nor anything else in this creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you know in your knower that you're loved by the King of Kings, that you're a child of the Most High, that you are here for a purpose, not to throw your life away, not to just give it away for the things of this world, but to know you can enjoy what the world has done, what God has done for you. You can enjoy it. But you know right from wrong. You know what you have to do and what you don't have to do. Don't be a people pleaser. Don't do what others do because you want to have a lot of friends. Remember what they did to God on the cross. Remember what they did to him for you and me. He didn't have anybody. Palm Sunday, he was a king walking on, on everything on a donkey because they had him up here. The next day, they crucified him for you and me, for our sins. That's the way we live too. Sometimes... To be able to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you might have to do without Amen. friends. The yeah. pastor always says, he says, I pray that my enemies would leave me. He said, and I lost all my friends. <laughs> With friends like that, why do you need enemies? <laughs> so you choose every day is a choice, people. Uh-huh. Every day is a choice. Yeah. Every day you have to decide who's you're going to serve. Are you going to serve your friends to have a lot of friends and be very popular? Are you going to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that created you for a purpose in this yeah. life? Yeah. There's a purpose and anointing in each life for each one of us. Yeah. But you have to decide on a daily basis for yourself, mm-hmm. for yourselves, what you're going to do for yourselves. Mm-hmm. We are, I keep reminding ourselves that we are a masterpiece of yes. our Heavenly King. But by choices, by choices, remember who you are. Don't compare yourself to anybody. For any reason, you're a child of the Almighty God yes. that lives lives in you, and you have to learn the truth so that the truth can set you free. Yes. Can set you free, brothers and sisters. That is it for this day. I could talk days and day outs, but we're here for another purpose. And I just need to pray for each one of you because I feel in my spirit that each one of you here are anointed, are loved are protected, are going to be used if you're not being used right now mightily, but we have to choose whose we are, who we're going to serve, what we're going to do on a daily basis. And it's up to you. It's up to you. Father God, we just thank